Lord, we welcome you here in this place this morning. You are already here, but God, we fix our eyes on you this morning. Let your, let your presence inhabit the praises of your people now, God. So let our praise be a welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your light. We are here for you. We are here for you. All to you, Lord. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire.
To the setting sun, his love endures. By the grace of God, we will carry on his love. In, from the rising to the setting sun, oh, from the rising to the setting sun, his love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. Love and just forever sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise forever. God is faithful, forever, God is strong. Forever God is with us Forever, forever Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong Forever God is with us Forever So sing for it. God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. As we stand here, let's just um, offer our praise to the Lord, to thank Him for being here with us, thank Him that we're free to gather like this. Thinking that no matter where we've come from, no matter the week we've just had, that we can come freely to praise and worship. Psalm 32 says, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. Sing, sing, all you who are upright in heart. And we come together to worship and praise that beautiful name of Jesus. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. 
My sin was great, your love was greater. And what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Because death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are open. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Yes, Heavenly Father, we gather today in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As we've just sung, he has no rival and no equal. Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us afresh today? May this time of fellowship be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. <clears throat> everyone who is here in the church building and also anyone who's joining us online. <clears throat> welcome also if you are here from the congregation of St. Peter's and St. Paul's or St. Mark's. It's really lovely to have you join us today. Um, and if you're here for the first time, welcome. We would love to meet you, so please do come and uh, find someone at the end of the service just to connect up. This is a particularly special service today because we have the baptism of Ottilie Hurst. So a uh, very warm welcome to Nikki and Lawrence and Ottilie's godparents and any other family and friends who are here today. As I say, very special occasion. We're going to move over to the notices in just a moment. There'll be a video, but before we do, a couple of things to mention. There will be prayer ministry taking place both during and after the service. So if you would like to receive prayer, or if you would like to receive prayer for someone else, um, then someone would be really delighted to pray with you. I believe that the prayer ministry team will be situated over there. So do go and make your way there if you'd like prayer, or come and find one of us and we will direct you. <clears throat> 
Uh, children's groups are running, so the children will be joining us again towards the end of the service. And finally, please do join us after the service at the Yew Tree Cafe outside for a drink. Um, it would be great to see you there. Okay, over to Simon and Mark, I believe, or the video run. Thanks, Abby. Yeah. Did a video. video. <laughs> oh, wait, have we got a video? A familiar face, I believe. Oh, no, not again. Welcome to the notices. Simon here. Uh, this Sunday, May the 15th, we're having donuts at Buzzbridge Church where we're celebrating with St Peter and Paul and St Mark's people coming together uh, with us. Half past ten is the donuts. There is a 9.10 service before that as well. May the 22nd is Quality Street Sunday, or in other words, our church meeting, the APCM. 10.30am at Buzzbridge, 4pm at Hambledon. Uh, join us for donuts, join us for Quality Street. Come and find out where we've been and where we're going next with the vision of what's happening with us on May the 22nd. Thank you. Um, and there are donuts afterwards in the Utree, so if, there are lots of them, so please, please. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to point out that um, Vickers are not so hard up, they've only got one shirt. Yeah, um, <laughs> I just want to point out, Mark said, it's the same shirt. Like, oh, my goodness. Uh, Simon, you've got something in your red book you want to read to us. Uh, the little red book, yes. It's not the book of life of God from Revelation, but we have the band's book. So we'd just like to read to you that it's great that some people want to get married. So William James McConey of Naphill and Brookwood and Chloe Eleanor Denty, also of Naphill and Brookwood, are uh, looking to get married. And Richard Christopher James Iverson of St. Mary with St. Peter and St. Jude West Brompton. It's very greedy, lots of churches there. And Sophie Lois Hemphill of All Saints Chelsea wish to marry. Uh, in publishing these bands of marriage between these people for the third time of asking if you, if you know any reason in law why they may not marry to each other, you are to declare it to me after the service. This is for the third time of asking. Uh, let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of weddings and thank you for the beauty of marriage. Thank you that though weddings are a day, marriage is a life. And we pray for these couples that they would discover that for themselves. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's, it's very exciting that we're all gathered here today. And um, we were slightly conscious that uh, we are part of the way through a series looking at the book of Daniel. Um, so I thought I'd just ask Simon... How have we got to? Where, give us a little bit of a pricey of where we got to. Right, so we are about to read Daniel chapter 4, so you can find that in your Bibles or on your phone apps if you want to in a minute, so I'll give you an early indication. Uh, and we've been going through Daniel, we're looking at this for three months, a whole of Daniel, and we're looking and asking, what does this man teach us about God and about life today, in that uh, the world is changing. I mean, I mean, it changed with Ukraine, which is very serious. It changed with COVID, which is very serious. And last night, not so serious. It changed with United Kingdom uh. second <laughs> place in the Eurovision. I mean, what has happened? The return of Jesus is soon. So the question is, in the late age of relativism and like what on earth's going on, what does Daniel teach us? So that's what we're looking at. We've been going through Daniel, Mark. So Mark, can I ask you a question? You can. Okay, and I don't know his answer. Uh, uh, so you've been here most weeks for Daniel, maybe all of them. Uh, something that you've taken, just one thing you've taken away from it so far, hoping you've got something. <laughs> Actually, this is something that we um, cropped up in our home group. Um, okay. So um, this week we were looking at Daniel 3, which mm -hmm. you were preaching on last week, um, which is the story of three young men who are thrown into a furnace because they wouldn't bow down mm -hmm. to a golden image made by King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are seen walking around in the fire with someone else and they come out and they're completely unharmed mm. um, and uh, we were just discussing it wasn't my revelation but someone in our home group said isn't it amazing how we are saved in the fire through the fire not out of it mm. and, and quite often we feel I feel um, in the fire you know the week is busy things go wrong mm. and yet I know God's there with me mm. um, not necessarily taking me out of it mm. Oh, that's brilliant. I think you can preach later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, come on then, I'm going to throw it back at you. What, yeah. what's, um, what's, what's hit you so far? Uh, I, I think, so for those who don't know, we plan our sermon series about a year in advance, uh, eight months in advance, and we had no idea what was going to be going on. And it's incredible how Daniel talking to a totalitarian 
regional superpower leader speaks into the current context there, but also the shifting sands of relativism in Daniel's world, you know, which God is God, what's right, what's wrong, all these things become anything goes, and again, that just speaks into our world today, and it's incredible how relevant something from 604 BC is to 2022, and that just, I'm amazed, I'm like, people say to me, oh, the Bible's boring, I'm going, you need to come to this church and listen. Thank you. Um, we're going to ask Abby to come and read okay. Daniel chapter 4 to us. Um, just as a slight pre-warning to everyone, there is going to be opportunity later on just to, you'll be asked to gather in small groups of three or four and just ask the person next to you what's hit you today. So you might want to take note. Yeah, don't fall asleep. So the reading today is taken from Daniel chapter 4, verses 19 to 28. Then Daniel also called Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, was greatly perplexed for a time, and his thoughts terrified him. So the king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you. Belteshazzar answered, my lord, if only the dream applied to your enemies and its meaning to your adversaries. The tree you saw, which grew large and strong, with its top touching the sky, visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all, giving shelter to the wild animals and having nesting places in its branches for the birds. Your majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. Your majesty saw a holy one, a messenger coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the wild animals until seven times pass by before him. This is the interpretation, your majesty, and this is the decree the Most High has issued against my Lord the King. You will be driven away from people and will, will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by before you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. The command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be then that your prosperity will continue. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to ask Simon to come up now. Um, Simon, could I pray for you before we begin? Mm. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for Simon and for the message that you have placed on his heart for us this morning. By your Holy Spirit, would you empower him and anoint him to share your word with grace and with boldness. Lord, we pray that your word would uh, dwell richly within us today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Abby and Mark. Um, Abby might be pregnant, and I just want to say it's amazing for you to be, because you can never, you know, go careful. Uh, so just say thank you. Can we say thank you to Abby in uh, particular and Mark? So thank you for standing up here today. Because uh, for all these people, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And actually, Ottilie, where are you? It's brilliant to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Ottilie's got all the books. Danny Dog, what's another one? Pepper Pig. Pepper Pig, yes. Gerald Giraffe, excellent. So you're very busy. So anybody bored by my talk, feel free to join <laughs> Ottilie, Harry, and the family. You know, there are loads of books here for you to read if you really want to. Get my, thank you, Owen. That's been brilliant. Thank you. We're uh, cut partway through a sermon series, so sorry if you're catching up with our story as we are. We're heading through these chapters, and, and life has got chapters to it, uh, hasn't it? Uh, the, the, the other day, uh, I thought, 
I wonder if people know what Vickers do. I mean, it's a really good question, isn't it? I'm not going to ask you what you think Vickers do. You might get some wrong answers. Uh, well, I, one of the things I did the other day was I went uh, to Sainsbury's. But I went to Sainsbury's in Guildford. Now, I know this is sort of traitor status. I, I do apologize. But I did discover something, that if you go to Sainsbury's in Guildford, it's a different layout to the, to the Sainsbury's in Godalming. Did you know this? Well, why didn't you tell me? Honestly. Well, you've been keeping it secret. They're not all standardized. And I was completely thrown by this situation. I was like, hold on, I'm in a different world, which is where Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar are in chapter 4. They're in a shifting world. They're not in Sainsbury's, but they're in a shifting world. So I went to Sainsbury's. That's the first thing. And can I have my image? Thank you. And this is what I found on sale. Richard Osmond's, I can't, I can't say it's any good, I can't say it's bad, I didn't buy it, but I did take a photo, uh, it was on sale at the very entrance to the Sainsbury's in Guildford, I don't know if it's in Godalming, and, and it says, the man who died twice, for those who don't know, he's a, he's a comedian, uh, Richard Osmond, so it's probably quite a funny book, and I thought, the man who tied dice, uh, died, died, hold on. <laughs> died twice, yeah, tied dice, no, he tied dice, the man who died twice, and I sort of went off as vicars do, ruminating on this, and I went for a walk to Hankley Common, not because of the book, I was going to Hankley Common, and as I was walking, there was this dead tree. So vicars now go to Sainsbury's and look at dead trees, okay? And I looked at this dead tree, and I thought, well, hold on a second, well, that tree hasn't lived twice, has it? It might spawn a new tree, but it's only lived once. Well, hold on a second, that's not right then. And then I thought, what would it mean for Nebuchadnezzar, what a name, or Daniel, or any of us to live a life well for Ottilie, her baptism? What does that mean for Lawrence and Nikki and the godparents? What does it mean to want a life lived well for Ottilie or anybody baptised into the Christian faith? What does it mean to want a life lived well for our respective church communities? And I thought, this is really important. And then I talked to, oh, I had already talked to a, a tree surgeon. And he said to me, do you know, Simon, trees have got three stages of life. Yes, I know they've got more, but he was simplifying it for me because I'm a mere mortal. And he said, the first phase is that they grow. They grow really fast. They suck everything in, particularly the carbon. They, they take carbon, they capture it, and they put it in starch into a tree trunk. Therefore, don't burn trees. And he said, the second phase is then stability, and that can last hundreds of years. Stability, nothing changes. The tree holds the carbon. And then the third phase is maturity. And some trees don't reach maturity because they are cut like a stump of Jesse, and they are destroyed. And I thought, well, hold on a second. What stage are we in? One life to live well. Come on, next image. Thank you. And I thought, well, I think there are three things to share with you today. The first one is a question of Nebuchadnezzar's denial. The second one is a question of dismay. What's going on, the world we now live in? And then where do we go next? What's freedom look like? Deliverance. Denial, dismay, deliverance. And maybe as I'm talking, one of these really resonates with you to take into the conversations in just a minute. In terms of, come on, first one, denial. Anybody recognize that man? I haven't put his name on there. Call it out. Thank you. Peaky Blinders. All right, okay. Hands up who's watched Peaky Blinders? You are the cultural people here this morning. Thank you. And my neighbours, excellent. This is brilliant. The rest of you, it's really violent, need to warn you. But uh, uh, this is uh, Shelby, based on a real person in the 1920s in, I think it's Birmingham, um, basically a mafia gang. And um, this is his statement throughout the series. I have no limitations. I am Shelby. I have no limitations. You could have put Nebuchadnezzar. I have no limitations. In verse 28, I am the king, or you could be the queen, of the I, me, and my. I am in charge of me, says Nebuchadnezzar. Do you, do you know that in Toronto, I think it's Toronto, there is a museum where they have some clay tablets, some clay bricks that Nebuchadnezzar used to build his cities, including Babylon, which he built two walls round just to be greedy. And on each of those bricks is stamped Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who provides for the temples, it's not there, of Esigel and Ezida, so two temples, to the god Marduk, the eldest son of Nabutosa, king of Babylon, I am, just in case anybody forgot at the end of the brick, I am, and he had these stamped on 15 million bricks. 
I think he might have had a son of confidence problem, forgetting who he was and what he did. Oh, there's another brick. What does it say? Oh, yeah, it's still me. That's where he started out. He is a totalitarian tyrant of a regional superpower. And if you stand against him, he comes to get you. The Bible speaks today. And then he has this dream. And in those days, dreams meant something. Dreams mean something to us normally. We try and forget them. In those dreams, they were called the wise men, the sages. It would be men. Uh, and, and Daniel, elsewhere in Scripture, is called a, a magician, because that's the language they'd have used. And they call them in, they line them all up and say, come on, tell us, tell us, what, this, tell us me what this dream is. He's disturbed by the dream. So he's in denial. He thinks he's in charge until the dream comes to him. Nebuchadnezzar is trapped in confusion. He thinks anything's okay for him to do. He, he thinks that he can make the rules. I have no limits, he says. In fact, his name, Nebuchadnezzar, literally means to the god of the Babylonians, Nabu, protect my boundaries. That's literally his meaning of his name in Babylonian. And he goes, I have no boundaries. I have no limits. And I thought, I bet there are some of us here, we think that we can carry on as we were. We think that it will all just go back to how it was. We think that if I just put my head in the sand, it will all be okay. And Nebuchadnezzar discovers that there's something else out there. Thank you. This is uh, Jung who speaks on this. Deep down below the surface of the average conscience, there is a small, still small voice that says to each one of us, something's out of tune. If nothing was out of tune, we wouldn't baptize Otterley. If nothing was out of tune, you wouldn't have come here today for some reason. If something wasn't out of tune, Jesus wouldn't have died on a cross to say there is a perfect, beautiful way of freedom and love, grace and peace. And so there is something that Jung, who I don't know if he's a Christian, but a top man, an eminent thinker says, there's something out of tune. If there's something out of tune today, friends, here is the place to bring it to Jesus. If there's something out of tune that's in denial, something out of tune because you're dis dismayed about something, lacking confidence, just as we come to baptism, this is where to bring it and gather it together. Or maybe you want to be like a lady called uh, Susanna English in a novel by Anne Rinaldi. She says in this, it's, it's quite a good quote, it's, it's made up, but I wonder if you identify with this. I have to admit, I did. I was, after all, Susanna, nobody here called Susanna, I was, after all, Susanna English, and our family had never, ever needed any help to gain entrance anywhere. I thought, I like that, I can do it my way. It's right back to Nebuchadnezzar, I am the king or queen of I, me, and my. Can we have my next one? Thank you. So let's just briefly say, well, hey, we don't want to stay in denial. We want to move out of that. But if that's where you are, bring it here this morning to Christ. And then we've got a sense of dismay. They cry out. He cries out. And what interests me is that the, the response of his courtiers who should help him is, oh, my goodness, we can't interpret this one. Have you ever had a friend that you've gone to, you've needed their help, quite honestly, and they have not come up trumps? because we're humans. And sometimes people sit on the fence or they fall off it and hide behind it. These people, they want to protect their own self-interest. They do not want to tell a powerful despot the truth about things are not going so well. So the despot carries on doing it because nobody's going to speak into it. And sometimes you and I are called to speak into people's lives, even if that's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for Daniel. Look at his reaction. He was dismayed and deeply disturbed, the passage says in the middle of the section there, Daniel chapter 4. Being dismayed does not mean we have a right to remain silent. Having our finger pointed at us and said, well, you know, you, doesn't mean we have a right to remain silent when we can see that there are people in denial and in dismay and they're seeking some way forward out of it. So Daniel speaks into the dismay, and what I love about the way he speaks into it, maybe this is for you and I to consider, he's not proud, he's not haughty, he's not aggressive, he's not arrogant. In fact, he's probably literally quaking in his boots thinking, really? Thanks, God? But he knows that he's got to speak it out. But the manner in which he speaks it makes it receivable by someone who has already killed tens of thousands of people. Daniel could be next. And so he speaks it in a manner which is receivable. And I think sometimes, some of us are Christians, 
we forget to speak in a manner which is receivable. It doesn't mean we always agree, but we can receive from one another. And so Daniel knows that uh, Nebuchadnezzar has reached his limits. And so let's see what happens next. Can we have my next one? Thank you. We enter into the realm of deliverance. And this is where my tree comes into it. Do you know this uh, Quentin Blake illustrator? Anybody want to guess the book? It's about some birds in a tree. It's about the Gregg family. Oh, the twits, thank you. No, it's the girl with the magic finger, nearly, and she converts a bunch of people into ducks because the people have been shooting the ducks. You need to go and read it while watching Shelby, while reviewing Eurovision, and if you want to, watch the FA Cup final, which is... Sorry, Chelsea fans here. No, yes, quite pleased about that one. Here we have deliverance. You see, deliverance doesn't mean that you avoid the consequences. The consequences of denial and dismay are that if you stay in them, nothing will change. Deliverance under Christ, as Mark said, walking through the fire, not avoiding the fire, means sometimes that things will be hard. Things are hard for many of you right now. Yet when we come to baptism, we are baptizing into hope, despite the situations. And we'll come on to that a bit more later. And so when we move into deliverance, what we're really saying is that the tree is moving into maturity. It's fascinating if you look at some of the theologians. They are convinced that Daniel chapter 4 was not written by Daniel because the language is different. Even the idea of him having watchers come to him in a dream. In other words, it was written by Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel wrote it down. It is such a step change in language and, t- and tone that it's a, a, a significant change. And for many centuries, people said, it must be made up. It must be made up. Until in 1975, they found a cruciform, cruciform tablet which said things which were very interesting to people. And let me just share just a couple of them with you, if I may, because I think you'll see why. This is not, this is not from Scripture about Nebuchadnezzar, at some point in his life, his attention was not directed towards the promoting the welfare of Esagil. Do you remember I said the bricks, 15 million, all stamped with Esagil, Marduk, the god, and now he's not promoting that god any longer. He didn't quite get there, but he's not getting there. He prays to the Lord of Lords. He weeps bitterly to Marduk. He does not show love to sons and daughters. Family and clan no longer exist to him. Nebuchadnezzar had something go on in his life that changed him. Deliverance brings change to you this morning and myself. Deliverance brings us into a new place of receiving of God, which is why it's the tree there. The tree is beautiful. Let me just pause and ask you, if I may, to, and if you're not used to this, it's where you turn and talk to people. Uh, I am going to ask you, can you think of other places in Scripture, in the Bible, where there's some famous trees? Just see if you can list a couple of famous trees in scripture. Just 20 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Okay, few seconds. Okay. So, trees. Trees. Trees are about deliverance. Did anybody get... I'm not going to ask you, because I'll get so many hundreds of trees coming at me, and I won't know if half of them are true. Uh, Did you get the tree of good and evil in the Garden of Eden? Oh, ten points. Did anybody get the tree of life? The other tree we forget about. And thank you, Sheila. Only Sheila got that. Well done, Sheila. Oh, no, no, you're all upset now because I'm... There we go. Oh, dear. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good, good, good and evil. You see, in Genesis 3.22, we find this passage which, which tells us why Adam and Eve are rejected from the Garden of Eden. They are reject, ejected because they've eaten from one tree, good and evil, they've got all the knowledge, but... God doesn't want them to eat from the tree of life. Read your scripture carefully. That's why they're rejected. 
It's actually to protect them from eternally having to live in this place of knowledge of good and evil. The very judgment is also a protection. He's moving them out in case, earlier in Genesis, in case they choose now to eat from the tree of life. And yet here we have in Daniel, we have this passage where he's a beautiful tree described. It's got, it's got birds living abundantly and sitting in the tree, in the twigs. Did you hear that? Uh, it's a place of shade, of a, pr- a provision. It's a vast tree. It stretches to heaven. This is a beautiful tree. And this is what Daniel says to Nebuchadnezzar. This is what good government is about. This is what good leadership is about. This is how you lead your life. This is your character. These are the things you do, and but you, you, O Nebuchadnezzar, have oppressed the poor and marginalized. You've broken them. You have denied the righteousness of God, and you have been filled with pride. Pride is the primary sin, according to a whole bunch of theologians from the fourth century onwards, and Pope Gregory I. Pride leads you down a journey, and the tree there then decays. And so Daniel says, there is this tree. And this tree is a tree of life, and is a foundation that will grow again. And of course, that's a reference to Jesus. And in that tree that's going to grow again, we are then called to be part of it. We're called to be the watchers and waiters, the providers under the tree of the Christian church. A church for the beauty and attraction. A church of abundance and blessing. A church which shades the vulnerable. A church of life and growth. A church of vastness. And a faith that corresponds. Deliverance is the most beautiful place to be in. Don't be locked in the other two. Be free in deliverance. It's a story of growth. It's not two lives, it's one life to live well. It's it's one which is where we reach the maturity of the tree. That we go from I, my, me, to we, they, us, under Christ. It's where pride is put in its place, and we cry out and say, Lord, change me. And that is what we do in baptism. I've got some questions for you at the end. Why don't you just look at those for a second? What does it mean to you to live your one life really well? There's a lady currently dying in a hospice. You've all seen it on the news. I wonder what it would look like for you to live your life well. What would reflecting on your reality mean? Where is that reality based? And how might you be a great person by knowing your limits? That's what greatness looks like by knowing your limits? And where can freedom now change your perspectives? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now for your blessing upon us. We wish to stand with gentleness as Daniel stood. We do not wish to be people of pride and haughtiness. Open your arms of love to us. May your Holy Spirit descend. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Simon. If you're anything like me, I come to the end of a service, I have a cup of coffee, I chat to quite a few people, I go home, and if, as my wife isn't here this morning, um, says to me, oh, what was church like this morning? What did you learn? So here's your chance to internalise. So I'm going to suggest, um, we've only got a couple of minutes for this before Abby leads us in a time of prayer. But just turn to three or four people around you. Believe me, you don't want it to be more than that because you won't be able to hear them. Um, But just make sure you gather up everybody around you. Three or fours, just ask each other, you know, what has jumped out at you this morning? What have you heard that you will take home and, and mull over during the week? So a couple of minutes just to grab people around you and ask the question.
It should be on the screen. It's at the end of it. At the end of the Oh, I've got you, got you, got you. Okay. Okay. So, if then that'll be all over. Nobody will be looking on this one, will they? Because you're down there. So, as I'm doing these. Are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> Good. End up bringing a, a coat just in case. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely seeing so many people. It is. It's great. But, um, that, was, that was that lovely. Hey, <laughs> is my mic on? Can I, could you, is my mic on? I'm on, I'm on. Okay, I hope you've had some, um, I hope you've had some good time of discussion, everyone. Let's just um, come to a time of silence now. <clears throat> and uh, we'll come to a time of, a short time of prayer and intercession. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can approach your throne of grace and make our requests to you in confidence through our Lord Jesus Christ. We lift up Ukraine and we pray that you will strengthen and guide its leaders and people and help them to trust and seek you in their time of need. We think of our own country, we pray for our government. Father, grant them wisdom and guidance as they seek to support Ukraine. Help all who are struggling to cope with inflation and those who seek to help them, such as food banks. We pray for our local and national church leaders for guidance, wisdom, and discernment to follow your call, for boldness to speak the truth and humility to hear what you are teaching them. Closer to home, we pray for our family, close friends, and neighbors. Father, we lift up those who are sick. Please grant them restoration and healing. We pray for those who are recently bereaved, that you would comfort them and bring them the peace that only you can give. And finally, we pray for ourselves, for faith and perseverance, to abide in Christ at all times. Let's just take a, a brief moment of quiet to pray about anything um, from this list, anything that's particularly on your heart today. Thank you, Father, for hearing these prayers, which we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Your word says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Father, please help us to persevere in praying for these things. Amen. Let's pray together as Jesus taught us. If we could just have the Lord's Prayer on the screen, please. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Thank you, Abby. Part of the baptism service, and the baptism will be towards the end of the service, um, there is a chance for Nikki and Lawrence, godparents, um, and family to reaffirm faith. But we thought it'd be nice if we all do it together. So, look, Owen, have we got the words for this, haven't we? We have. Do you want to stand? Let's stand and... And there are some bits that are in bold, which are obviously for all of us. Um, let's, let's sing those out, um, or shout those out boldly, but not... This first bit's from me. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, as we approach baptism later in this service, will you welcome this child and help hold her in her new life in Christ? In baptism, God calls each of us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, and we ask of ourselves and each other, do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit. And do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? Let's say it together. We praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give him thanks and praise, and we're going to praise him again now. So, Ben, I'll lead, hand over to you. Sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. was grace that told my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first be Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. promise good to me his word my hope secure he will my shield and portion be as long as life is Set free, my God, my 
chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing Sing, everyone needs compassion. Because everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, come fill my life again, I give my life to follow everything I believe in, now I serve. My Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the shine your light. Shine your light and let the whole world we're singing for the glory of the risen King, Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light, so shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, oh Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Do please take a seat. We are now, uh, the children are about to come in, so we're going to say goodbye to our YouTube connection. Um, so we'll see you next week. Um, and our young people are going to file in. This is perfect timing.
Look at that. Oh, 